After months, if not years, of waiting to see something concrete, the trailer for the new Transformers animated movie finally dropped this week. And I thought I'd try out something a bit different for the channel, and do a breakdown video, going over all the things I noticed in it, and how it all ties in to Transformer history. These are the basics on Transformers 1. So, first and foremost, the story of this film is primarily based on the backstory Hasbro originally developed for the Aligned Continuity, a multimedia project that launched in 2010, which combined ideas from across the franchise's history to create a definitive, unified, modern vision for Transformers lore. This story told how, before the war, Cybertron was a world of corruption and inequality, with society divided into different classes, with the elite haves on top and the working class have-nots on the bottom. In this time, the young Optimus Prime and Megatron had been friends, working together to try to bring equality to their world, only to fall out over how to best accomplish their goals, their disagreements sparking the conflict that would become the Great War. This has become the standard origin story for basically every series since, with each new cartoon or comic putting their own spin on its basic ideas, and Transformers 1 looks to be no different. At this point in their lives, Optimus Prime and Megatron are known as Orion Pax and D-16 respectively. Orion Pax was established to be Optimus's name before he became Prime in the original Transformers cartoon episode War Dawn in 1985. Megatron's former identity as D-16 was created for the Aligned continuity. D-16 is a reference to the identification number on the Japanese release of his original Generation 1 toy. His appearance here seems to draw from his early character design, as seen in the original Marvel comic book, with a black helmet and yellow eyes. Orion and D-16 are both worker bots on the bottom rung of society. Megatron, at least, seems to be a miner, excavating what looks like Energon, the glowing purple mineral that is the Transformers' primary fuel. The idea of Megatron being an Energon miner originated in the 2007 IDW publishing comic book Megatron Origin in which he rallied his fellow lower-class bots to violently rise up and tear down the corrupt system. The Aligned Continuity story drew heavily on Megatron Origin, but added Orion Pax to the tale as Megatron's friend, who agreed with his goals, but not his means of achieving them. However, in the Aligned story, Orion was a data archivist from the higher classes, Transformers 1, making him one of Megatron's fellow lower-class bots, represents a return to the character's roots, as he was also a labourer in the original cartoon, working in warehouses on the docks. The Transformers Earth Spark cartoon also depicted Orion as a labourer just last year. Perhaps this is taking the place of Archivist as his new default backstory. The Aligned story presented Cybertronian society as being divided based on transformation, with a Transformer's job and position on the social hierarchy being determined by what they turned into. Here though, in another of the film's significant new twists on the base story, it seems that the lowest classes can't transform at all. This is because, as evidenced by the large holes in the characters' chests, they don't have T-Cogs, the robotic organs that allow them to change shape. These cogs were introduced in the original cartoon, and their lore was expanded in 2010's Transformers Prime, which established that they were responsible not just for allowing a Transformer to convert to alternate mode, but also for controlling their built-in tools and weapons, something that this trailer is making clear is also the case in this film. T-Cogs have come to be treated today as being an inherent part of Transformer biology, so the question is, why don't our heroes have them? Were they created without them, or were they removed? The Iacon 5000 is a race, first mentioned in, believe it or not, the letters page of issue number 326 of the UK version of the Marvel comic, published in 1991. Just guessing here, but it looks to me like Orion and D-16 are going to try to sneak in to see this race, but wind up very publicly disrupting it. And I think that's what's going to land them in trouble with this bot. 
who reports out of preview screenings have identified as Darkwing, a Decepticon introduced in 1988, and get them busted down to waste management, where they meet. Hi there, I'm B127. I'm actually working on some nicknames. The, the one I'm floating right now is um, Badassatron, which is actually pronounced Badassatron. This, of course, is Bumblebee. B-127 was established to be his original name before coming to Earth by the 2018 Bumblebee live-action movie. The battle mask he acquires later in the trailer draws inspiration from the head of his original Generation 1 toy, which was very different to how he looked in the cartoon and comic. While his knife hands evoke the daggers used by his counterpart in the War for Cybertron video game. Rounding out the main cast is Elita-1. This character was created for the original Transformers cartoon, in which she was a resistance leader on Cybertron, and before that, Orion Pax's girlfriend. Like the other three main characters, she also had a different name before becoming Elita One. She was Ariel, but it doesn't seem like this film is going to use that. The idea that the lower classes literally live underground and are forbidden from travelling to Cybertron's surface is a new one for this film. Though the depiction of the planet as a beautiful, living world brings to mind how it appeared in IDW's 2019 Transformers comic book. The robot our four heroes meet on the surface is Alpha Trion, an elderly Autobot sage who was Optimus Prime's mentor in the original cartoon. The aligned continuity expanded his backstory to depict him as a member of the legendary group of godlike Transformers known as the Thirteen Primes, who were the very first Transformers created by the God of Light, Primus. And some version of that story definitely seems to be the case here as well, as the dead bodies of several of the other Primes can be seen dotted about the cave, from which Tryon harvests the teacogs that he gives to Orion and friends. As we've seen from his toy and one very brief blurry moment in the trailer, Alpha Trion transforms into a lion, an idea originally conceived in stories from the official Transformers convention Botcon and first rendered in toy form by 2016's Titan's Return. The dead Prime most clearly visible on screen is Onyx Prime. This, in the background of the same shot, might be Liege Maximo, while this robot, with a helmet that looks like the Decepticon symbol, is almost certainly Megatronus. Megatronus was a warrior of darkness, whose misdeeds saw him excommunicated from the Primes, after whom D-16 will rename himself when his own descent into darkness leads him to become Megatron, and whose face he'll use as the insignia of his new faction, the Decepticons. Also known as the Fallen, Megatronus was created for the 2003 Dreamwave Productions comic book The Dark Ages, and prominently featured in the 2009 movie Revenge of the Fallen, which introduced the idea that his face was the basis for the Decepticon symbol. Note, however, that D-16 already has Megatronus's face stamped onto his shoulder. I don't think that means the Decepticons already exist in this movie, but rather indicates that D-16 is maybe something like a follower of or a believer in Megatronus. You know, sort of the Cybertronian equivalent of maybe like wearing a crucifix? Maybe. We'll see. Uh, guys, that's not good. They aren't named, but there's no way these tentacled creatures aren't the Quintessons, accompanied by their Sharktacon servants. These aliens were introduced in the original Transformers animated movie in 1986, and the cartoon series would subsequently reveal that, in its continuity, they were the creators of the Cybertronian race, until the robots rose up against them and forced them off the planet. Most stories since the original cartoon have abandoned this origin, though, preferring to depict Primus as the creator of the Transformers. So instead, modern media, most prominently the aligned continuity, depicts the Quintessons as invading and conquering Cybertron early in its development, introducing the systems of governance that eventually result in the planet becoming the world of injustice that Orion and D-16 come together to fight against. And that certainly looks like it's the direction that this movie has taken too. The robot the Quintessons are menacing seems guaranteed to be Sentinel Prime. 
This character was originally created for the Marvel comic book, in which he was Optimus Prime's predecessor as leader of the Autobots. In modern stories, he's come to generally be characterised as a corrupt or amoral bot, as perhaps most famously evidenced in the 2011 movie Dark of the Moon. His role here looks to draw directly from the Aligned continuity, in which he was essentially a puppet Prime installed by the Quintessons to rule Cybertron in their stead. One apparent very big difference in all of this is that in the Aligned version of the story, the Transformers fight to free their planet from the Quintessons, and Orion and D-16's crusade against inequality are two separate stories that happen in different time periods, but it looks like this film is condensing them down into one. Assuming that these shots aren't flash-forwards and actually happen within the story of the movie, it seems like we'll see the friends falling out happen on screen, as D-16 adopts the name of Megatron and Orion acquires the Matrix of Leadership and becomes Optimus Prime. Other recognisable characters that can be spotted throughout the trailer include multiple generic trooper types that look like the Vehicons from Transformers Prime, very surprisingly what looks to be Arachnid, also from Prime, iconic Decepticons Soundwave, Starscream and Shockwave, plus other Decepticon jets bearing what look to be the colours of Skywarp, maybe Slipstream, Thundercracker and possibly Dirge, at least. And there are loads of bots in this shot that, from their colours, also look like they could be classic Transformers characters, but they're all vague enough that I don't really want to start guessing, so we'll just have to wait and see if the film gives us a closer look at any of them to be sure. That's about everything I noticed. Leave a comment below if there's anything else you spotted, or if you've got a different reading on any of these scenes than I do. Only five months to go before we get the whole picture, but until then stay tuned to the basics for more history and lore from the world of the Transformers.